Hello, all you big, beautiful brains out there. Today, we're going to talk about left brain versus right brain. Before we get started, take a minute to subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. Help out your friendly neighborhood psychologist while I tell you all about left brain and right brain. So, let's get right into the epic battle. Left brain versus right brain. First, let's figure out which one you are. That way, you'll know who to hate. <laughs> so, who's watching this video that's more logical? You like science. You prefer facts. If you are great at getting organized and following a plan, this is you. That makes you a left-brained person. Now, who's more artistic? Are you creative? Do you follow your gut to make a decision? Are you spur of the moment and spontaneous? That makes you a right-brained person. If you still don't know which one you are, go online. Find a left brain versus right brain quiz. There are hundreds and they only take you a couple minutes. Go ahead, go ahead, I'll wait. Everybody back? Now, if you're left brain, or your right brain. Now you should know. Now, here's the next thing I want you to know about being left brained or being right brained. It's a lie. Yeah, there is no such thing as being left brained or being right brained. It's a myth. You'll notice all those quizzes are marked for entertainment purposes only. Being left brained or being right brained is not a real thing. But I've heard about left brain, right brain my whole life, you'll say. How dare you tell me it's not true, you weird psychology lady? Well, science is on my side. Or, in this case, the lack of science. There just aren't any empirical tests that say who you are correlates to one half of your brain. In fact, the traits I talked about at the top of the video, like being organized or being spontaneous, are definitely linked more with personality traits as measured by the five-factor model of personality than they are with any one area in your brain. When you look into the neuroanatomy of your personality, both sides of your brain matter. Your brain is a network of connections that depends on both sides to function perfectly. So, what is true about this whole left-brained, right-brained thing? Well, for starters, your brain is split in two. Your brain is a paired organ. That means it has two sides that are more or less the same. You have lots of paired organs in your body, like your lungs or your kidneys. Two of them, basically identical, doing the same job. Your brain is separated by a deep groove called the longitudinal fissure that goes almost all the way through your brain, splitting both sides. Think of it kind of like a mohawk, but inside your head. The longitudinal fissure splits your brain into a left side and a right side. Another thing that's true about the left brain, right brain myth is that there are some areas of the brain that definitely specialize in certain tasks. For instance, the left side of your brain, or left hemisphere, seems to be involved a lot in language production, so making you talk and in choosing your words. When different parts of your brain specialize in certain tasks, we call it lateralization. You can think of lateralization kind of like a group project. Different people get assigned different tasks based on what they're good at. And that way, the whole job can get done. And lateralization 
your brain gives different areas tasks based on what they're good at. Here's where it all starts to break down. Lateralization is not the same for everyone. Most of the information that we have about people who use only one side of their brain, either left or right, comes from specific case studies for individuals. And at this point, it seems like while there are some general rules, people can use their brains differently, the same way we can use our eyes differently or our arms differently. And the same ways that you use your eyes or your arms change, <laughs> as you get older, lateralization of specific tasks changes as we age. Your brain is always making new connections, and that means it can change. There are studies being done right now that follow the pattern of brain changes from young adults as they age. The individuals who participate in psychological studies gave us a huge piece of valuable information, and it's that specialization does not mean exclusivity. So let's go back to that brain area I was talking about earlier, how parts of the left side of your brain are really involved in speech production. Does this mean that if that area was damaged by, say, an injury or a stroke, that that person would just never talk again? Well, no. It largely depends on the extent and severity of the damage. Oftentimes, the brain can rewire or reroute information to overcome this type of problem, but it does take time and medical treatment. Think of it like that group project I was talking about before. If one person drops out of the project, it doesn't mean you still can't get all the work done. You're just going to do it differently than you would have before. So, where did the left brain, right brain myth start? Chances are, it was from the media, not truly understanding the concept of lateralization. From there, that information went out to the general population, and it got mangled into this left brain, right brain myth that's so pervasive today. If you'd like to know more myths about our brains, subscribe to Psy vs. Psy. And until then, why don't we hear that waiting music again? That's kind of my jam now.